In the annals of gaming history, few villains have etched their mark as indelibly as Vaz Montenegro from Far Cry 3. His haunting mantra, Did I ever tell you the definition of insanity? echoes through the corridors of gaming culture, setting a benchmark for what a video game antagonist can be. As we stand on the cusp of Far Cry 7's release, the shadow of Vaz looms large, presenting a formidable challenge. How can the new antagonist possibly surpass one of the most iconic figures in video game history? The Far Cry series, renowned for its lush landscapes and heart-pounding action, finds itself at a critical juncture. Despite the commercial success, the franchise has faced a gradual decline in critical acclaim, particularly concerning its antagonists post Vaz. Each new title has attempted to recapture the magic with charismatic, yet ultimately less impactful villains, leading to a sense of antagonist fatigue among the fanbase. The reception has been a mixed bag of praise for gameplay innovation but criticism for failing to deliver villains with Vaz's compelling allure. Thus, Far Cry 7 stands as a pivotal chapter in the franchise's saga. The new antagonist doesn't just need to be good. They must be groundbreaking, transforming the entire narrative landscape of the game. They are expected to carry a heavy burden, tasked with reinvigorating the series and captivating a generation of gamers who crave more than just a formidable foe, they seek a narrative experience that will leave them awestruck. The success of Far Cry 7 hinges on this crucial element. An antagonist who can transcend the legacy of Vaz, redefine the series, and etch a new legend in the gaming pantheon. The Far Cry series has always been synonymous with its compelling antagonists, each bringing a unique flavor of tyranny and charisma to the gaming world. The evolution of these characters is a journey through a landscape of narrative innovation and creative storytelling, with Vaz Montenegro setting a towering standard in Far Cry 3. His unpredictable nature, philosophical tirades, and chilling intensity turned him into an icon, transcending the game to become a symbol of video game villainy. Vaz's impact was profound, his character a blend of charm and menace, creating a complex figure that players loved to hate. Following Vaz, Far Cry 4 introduced Pagan Men, a villain with a penchant for style and sadism, wrapped in a veneer of suave sophistication. While Pagan Min was memorable for his flamboyant personality and sharp wit, he didn't quite capture the same sense of danger and psychological depth as Vaz. His reign, though tyrannical, felt less personal, his connection with the player more distant. Joseph Seed from Far Cry 5, with his messianic zeal and apocalyptic vision, brought a different kind of intensity to the series. His calm demeanor, juxtaposed with his capacity for cruelty, created an unsettling presence. However, the narrative sometimes struggled to fully leverage his potential as a captivating cult leader. Far Cry 6's Anton Castillo, portrayed by Giancarlo Esposito, brought cinematic gravitas to the franchise. His portrayal of a dictatorial leader intent on passing down his ruthless legacy to his son added layers of familial tension and moral ambiguity. Yet, despite Esposito's compelling performance, the character often felt confined by the game's broader narrative, unable to wield the same kind of personal vendetta that made Vaz so enthralling. The diminishing impact of Far Cry's antagonists post-Vaz is indicative of a larger trend within the series. While each villain brought something unique to the table, there's been a growing sense of familiarity, a pattern that has led to what some fans describe as antagonist fatigue. The challenge for Far Cry 7 is clear. It must innovate beyond the established blueprint, offering an antagonist who can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Vaz, not just in memorability, but in their ability to evoke a profound and lasting impact on the player. The series' future may well depend on its ability to overcome this antagonist problem, crafting a character who can redefine what we expect from video game villains. The Far Cry series has long been celebrated for its compelling narratives, expansive worlds, and most notably, its antagonists. These characters are not merely obstacles to be overcome. They are central to the game's narrative experience, often embodying the themes and moral quandaries of the story. With Far Cry 7, the expectations from both the franchise and the gaming community are monumental. The game is tasked with delivering an antagonist who can not only rival the charismatic menace of Vaz Montenegro, but also redefine what players expect from a video game villain. The anticipation surrounding Far Cry 7's antagonist is fueled by a blend of nostalgia for past villains and a craving for innovation. Gamers are seeking a character that combines Vaz's captivating unpredictability, Pagan Min's charismatic tyranny, Joseph Seed's chilling conviction, and Anton Castillo's authoritarian gravitas, 
all while introducing a fresh, compelling narrative angle. The community expects a villain who can intimately connect with the player, offering a personal, immersive, and emotionally engaging conflict that extends beyond the screen and lingers in the player's mind long after the game is over. Leaked information has hinted at a narrative that places the antagonist at the very heart of the game's tension and drama. The stakes are reportedly higher than ever before, with a storyline revolving around the protagonist's kidnapped family. This plot device is poised to create a deeply personal and high-stakes conflict, elevating the antagonist's role from merely being a source of opposition to being the catalyst of the entire narrative. Such a scenario promises to intensify the player's emotional investment and heighten the sense of urgency and peril, making the antagonist's character development, motivations, and interactions with the player crucial to the game's impact and success. This new narrative direction suggests that Far Cry 7's villain will need to exhibit a complexity and depth that surpasses their predecessors. They must be a character who can evoke a spectrum of emotions from the player, from empathy to revulsion, fascination to fear. The antagonist's actions, motivations, and backstory will need to be richly developed, offering players a nuanced and multifaceted figure who challenges their morals, decisions, and perceptions of right and wrong. Moreover, the inclusion of a kidnapped family introduces a visceral, immediate threat that personalizes the conflict like never before in the series. It suggests a game where the antagonist is omnipresent, not just a distant figurehead, but a constant, looming threat that impacts every decision the player makes. This dynamic has the potential to create a unique, interactive relationship between the player and the antagonist, one where every encounter is charged with intensity and the outcome feels deeply consequential. In essence, Far Cry 7's antagonist is not just expected to be a character in a game, but a defining element of the gaming experience itself. They must embody a new level of narrative sophistication, delivering a performance that is both memorable and impactful, capable of standing as a landmark in the evolution of video game antagonists. The challenge is immense, but the opportunity is unparalleled. To set a new standard for what a video game villain can be and elevate the entire Far Cry franchise to unprecedented heights. The primary risk is the potential for narrative oversaturation. If the antagonist's presence is too overwhelming or poorly executed, it could detract from the player's agency, making them feel like a spectator rather than a participant in the story. Additionally, there is the challenge of innovation fatigue players might be expecting something so revolutionary that it becomes impossible to meet their high expectations, leading to disappointment. There's also the danger of the antagonist overshadowing other elements of the game, such as exploration, side quests, and player choice, which are integral to the Far Cry experience. Conversely, a well-crafted antagonist can elevate the entire gaming experience creating a memorable and engaging narrative that stands out in the crowded gaming landscape. It can also reinvigorate the franchise, drawing in new players and rekindling the interest of veterans disillusioned by previous installments. Successfully centering the game around the antagonist could lead to a deeply personal and emotionally resonant story, enhancing player immersion and investment in the game world. This approach can revitalize the franchise by setting a new standard for character-driven storytelling in action-adventure games, potentially influencing future titles within and outside the Ubisoft portfolio. It's an opportunity to redefine what players expect from a Far Cry game, moving beyond the formulaic to deliver a unique, unforgettable experience. The importance of the antagonist in Far Cry 7 cannot be overstated. This character is more than just a foil for the protagonist. They are the linchpin of the game's narrative ambition and its potential legacy within the gaming community. As Ubisoft ventures into this new chapter, the balance they must strike is delicate crafting a villain who captivates audiences with their complexity, drives the story forward, and elevates the entire gameplay experience. We're standing at a crossroads, and the direction Far Cry 7 takes could redefine not just its own legacy, but the standards for antagonists in video games moving forward. Now, we turn the conversation to you, the gamers and fans. What are your expectations for the Far Cry 7 antagonist? What qualities do you believe will make them unforgettable? Share your thoughts, hopes, and predictions in the comments below. And remember, if you're as excited as we are to see how Far Cry 7 will redefine its legacy, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. Your engagement fuels our passion for exploring the ever-evolving world of video games. Let's embark on this thrilling journey together, anticipating a game that could transform the landscape of narrative-driven gaming. Narrative-driven gaming.